My name is Rafael Rungani Jiro. I come from Embo County and uh, I'm a farmer. I purely deal with the green of farming. I started farming the year 2011. It's basically decided as a young person I want to engage in agriculture. Reason being the population is increasing at a very high rate and people have to eat. So I saw an opportunity whereby uh, I found out that uh, if, I, if I engage myself in farming and not just the open field but the end of uh, farming whereby we use the greenhouses, I can be able to produce more. I'll have less challenges uh, unlike in the outdoor, so I'll be able to produce more production so as to make more profit and then also uh, to feed the nation. I have a young daughter and uh, she used to get uh, coughs uh, since uh, starting school and I went to the doctor and they recommended I use some honey concoction with ginger and garlic and I got an interest. Uh, sometimes it's hard for us to get honey, you only have to, you know, you go to the supermarket, sometimes it's not there and it's expensive, so I thought, uh, why not try and keep bees and get the honey myself. Starting up uh, wasn't easy, the capital involved was uh, quite a challenge. Uh, for example, like one beehive costs uh, around 5,000, between five and 7,000, so raising that capital wasn't easy. I didn't have enough information on beekeeping, so I had to go to the offices, agricultural offices here in Embu and in Nairobi to get information, so it wasn't easy. But the moment I got the information, I decided to start. I started small with uh, like five to ten beehives, then grew. The first challenge that I came through was uh, capital. When a young person wants to have a greenhouse, capital is an issue. Then the second one uh, is lack of technical know-how, whereby we are talking about the skills. You find that young people don't have skills on greenhouse farming. So for me, initially it was a challenge because I had to source for information, I had to source for how to construct the greenhouse. Uh, but with time, that was after two years, I was able to come across the trainers who trained me on greenhouse construction and also on greenhouse farming. Farming I take is as an occupation and I do farm, I involve myself in agriculture mainly, but I do some daily farming so that I can get some manure from my daily farming. Yeah, I choose daily farming because I want them to be a role model, especially to the youth, and I want them to change the narrative whereby the youth, especially those from the form fours or from college, take agriculture as a thing of their own people, as a thing of the people who are not educated. So my major thing to take the daily farming was to change that narrative eh? because I know the agriculture, in, if you can take agriculture as in a business, it can employ you in the first place. In this summit, what we are doing is that uh, we want to really uh, make sure that uh, the youths are linked uh, to the opportunities that are existing in agriculture. We have various opportunities that do exist, but the youths do not see them. Like uh, we have uh, um, uh, opportunities that uh, begin from way from the production of uh, the commodities in the shambas. We have opportunities in harvesting. We have the opportunities in post harvesting, and also opportunities in marketing. And uh, many people don't keep on seeing that, and therefore the intention of this summit is to ensure that people see those opportunities and then they can embark on them because uh, any of us can link into any area and get into uh, and make some money from uh, any of those areas. Uh, the Department of Agriculture uh, in the county government uh, in collaboration with uh, the national government 
we had uh, our technical uh, staff from the department working very closely with the technical staff from the national government, that is the Ministry of Agriculture. We had experts from the Food Agriculture Organization of, uh, the, United, of the United Nations uh, and, and other stake key stakeholders who were able to give us input into the document. And also we also had the input of the youth. So uh, after the development of the draft document, we actually uh, took the document to all the four sub-counties so the youth could be able to understand uh, the document and also have them scrutinize the document and give their input and also um, their views on the whole thing. And uh, the turnout was quite amazing and actually it was very impressive to see that the youth are actually ready to take up the sector. When the youth will be funded, because we are talking about the funding, I believe that the youth will be funded, they will be given the skills so that now they can be able uh, to engage themselves in agriculture. In that way, we, 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 are going to, uh, we are going to get an advantage on two areas. One, we have the area of food shortage, which is in the big, four big agenda, so that will be catered for. The other one, the young people will get jobs. Because as we talk, there are no jobs. We have to agree on that, even for the young people, uh, those that are educated, they have their degrees, they have their diplomas. The only field whereby we have uh, an opportunity whereby the young people can actually uh, take advantage of is in agriculture. I am excited because one information will be available, readily available, and the government has promised to support the youth in agriculture in terms of funding some of the projects. Um, giving information, uh, the use of the extension officers in terms of uh, assisting the youth in making sure that their projects succeed. The marketing strategies will be there, linking the farmer to the market, yes. I have been in production for the last 11 years. So the problems that I'm actually uh, addressing on a policy level are challenges that we have actually experienced as people. Uh, being in the sector as producers and as, uh, and as traders in, in the sector. So the, the kind of uh, in, input that we bring and the kind of address that we bring is actually practical and we've actually seen how the sector can be able to sustain the young people in it. So for me, I would uh, just like to encourage that the, the young people uh, have a positive mind. There's no green money. When we talk about wealth creation, if you're in agriculture and someone else is in the white collar job, there's no green money or blue money. Money is money. So mine is to just say that uh, let us take what is there and make it profitable and make it work for us. For the, for the, for the county government, one, I would like to appreciate the work they have been doing. They have now realized that the young people are uh, very critical when it comes to agriculture. And in a very special way, I would like to appreciate, uh, one, the policies that they have come up with. Number two, the budget that they have put aside for the young people so that they can be able to uh, utilize this particular opportunity in agriculture. Embu County, you are blessed. For sure, to now na kazi imeanza kufanyika. And what I would like to encourage the farmers, this is the time to take advantage of our county government. In fact, the county government did it in Genezwa, Kuleta, Nduma, Komwanainchi, Apachini. And I can say, and I can sure say, if we can be able to take advantage of this government intervention, of today's launch, we, we, we shall be in a better position. And then we think agriculture as a business.